So leading straight on from our previous tutorial, uh, I'm going to look at this photographic exposure control we've got here in a little bit more detail. So we've got our presets here, and one of our presets was indoor daylight, and that's given us an exposure value. And when I rendered the scene, you can see we have our little window appear up here. Now, in actual fact, this image is a, a high dynamic range image, although you wouldn't, uh, wouldn't know it to look at it. And what I can do with that is I can increase my exposure value, which makes things darker, or I can decrease my exposure value, which makes things on the whole brighter. Now, these are quite big sort of um, chunks that we're going through here between uh, 0 to 10. And you notice that we're changing these values down here in shutter speed as well when we're doing this. So really all we're doing with this exposure value is, is going to sort of presets of our shutter speed, uh, aperture and film ISO. If you know anything about photography, you may well prefer to use the photographic exposure control as opposed to the exposure values. Now I've got here, first of all, my film ISO, so 100 is a bright sunny day. I could maybe change that to 200. That'll make things quite bright. I can then start to play around with my shutter speeds and my f-stops. So if I change my f-stop and I make it too low, again, I'm going to overblow things. And you can see here, by changing my film speed to 200, I'm going to need to increase my shutter speed in order to control this and not allow for too much blowout going on around here. So maybe I'll try making that 64 to begin with. And that's kind of bring, brought things under control. But maybe that's kind of brought us back to where we were. So what happens if I try 32? Well, 32 is a little bit brighter. Um, that's not too bad. What about 24? Uh, no, it's OK. Yeah, OK, we're getting a little, little bit too bright there, maybe. So maybe I'll go back up to 32. And maybe I'll look at changing my f-stop now. So I'll try f-stop 6. And that's really made the scene very, very bright. So we've helped ourselves there. But I want to take a little bit extra uh, control. or take a little bit of time to have some extra controls in our scene. And the first thing I want to do is I want to reduce the amount of burn that we're getting in here. So what I'm going to do is down here we've got this value 0.25. And we can see there's a curve here as well. What I can do is I'm going to bring that right the way down. And you can see we're losing the burn in there. If I put that back up, we're getting a lot of blowout happen in there. So I'll take that right the way down. And there you go. My mid-tones that you can see here are really just kind of like a general colouring. It's, it's, I'm either going to wash out the whole thing or I'm going to make it too dark to view anything. So I'm going to kind of leave that alone at a value of 1. And then we're going to look at our shadows. Now what I want to do with the shadows here is I want to make try and make a little bit of contrast in this. So I'm going to take my shadows up to 1. Now that is going to make things dark around the back here. But if I make it too bright, you can see we start to get uh, a washout happening. And there's no sort of contrast in there. So yeah, maybe I want to take that up a little bit low. Or a little bit higher rather. Colour saturation and white point. Really, I don't want to play around with the colour saturation. If I take it out, everything becomes black and white. If I take it up too high, we take the blue that's coming in from the light and we really, really add too much blue in there. So quite frankly, yeah, I'm going to take that out. Now the white point, this is interesting. This is to do as well with the levels. If you ever worked with flow, in Photoshop with levels, what this refers to, you can see there Kelvin, is the white point, is the, the hot temperature for the light as being 65,000 degrees Kelvin. Uh, if I play around and change that, you can see if I increase that, we make things yellow. If I decrease it, I'm going to make things too blue, in fact, far too blue. So I will press Ctrl Z and take that back to where it was. It's not something I really want to play around with for this. It's kind of set to daylight. You might play around with it if your preset was non-physically based lighting. Uh, vignetting is an interesting one, very much the sort of the top gear sort of thing. We can go between a range of 0 and 25, and although we're not going to see any options here, you start to get some of the edges start to become darkened out. So I'm going to leave that as it is. The physical scale, the 
candelas per meter squared as we see it here in units refers to an exposure control relative to the light okay so at the moment it's in physical units so it's linked directly to the light if I make this unitless you see that 15,000 is way too high I have to take it right the way down to one in order for it to make sense and even then we kind of you need to go up quite a bit and again we're losing a little bit in there I can maybe make this a little bit brighter by making that unitless value maybe two just to sort of um, give us a little bit of a brighter scene but still with some contrast in it um, gamma and LUT really properly just ignore it don't touch it unless you've got a spider that you can put on to get the gamma right for your monitor you will never get this to work I spoke about this in the preferences and settings and really I just don't think you should be touching it um, so with that said that's a little look at the um, the settings that we've got here let's have a look at the result shall we and I'll just press render this was my one before and I'll pause it until we come back again so here's the final result and actually what you can see now is we've just tweaked it a little bit from the last one we're not getting any blowout now you notice that there's no blowout but it is nice and bright we have got a good amount of light coming through and into the scene it's not looking too dark around these areas here this is nice showing it in the foreground being slightly darker I'm really I'm quite happy with that I'm now prepared to start going in and putting my materials on there so yeah really happy with that in conjunction with our interior rendering with the daylight system it's all starting to come together now